Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel Philosmos where everything philosophical is discussed. Now today I'll be talking about how to commune with nature or how to communicate with nature. So the normal assumption that we human beings make is that we are distinct and different from all the other living creatures on this planet. Which is a valid point, because we are the only ones that demonstrate the signs of being self-aware, of being conscious, of having the ability to make decisions that will affect you in the future. To think about the future, to contemplate the future, and furthermore contemplate the past, and integrate that information into something useful. We are the only species that demonstrates the signs of self-awareness and because we are the only ones that demonstrate this now we've created a bridge a gap uh, we've distinguished ourselves from all the other living creatures within this planet we have created separation between humanity and coercely nature and because of this, there is now a disconnection between humanity and nature. But within the time that we're living in right now, we're evolving and our consciousness is expanding and we're realizing that we are more than just human beings. We are more than just human beings. And because we're more than just human beings, then our communication is not limited to just humans. See, the normal purview is that the only communication that we should partake in is the communication that we share with other human beings. But we don't understand the vast web of creation. We don't understand the vast web of living organisms that are surrounding us right now as we speak that we could form in communication with, but we don't because we have denied ourselves or we are ignorant of the fact that we are connected with nature. We are extensions of that nature. So not only do we have the ability to communicate with nature in totality, but uh, it's something that is actually fundamental. So most people are wondering right now, why on earth would I want to communicate with nature? I can get all the information that I need communicating with other people or even communicating with myself thinking. Um, but I invite you to look at a perspective that I'd like to share. That there are actual proven benefits, scientifically proven benefits uh, in exposing yourself to natural um, organisms and to nature itself. For instance, when you're in your house and then you get out and hopefully there are trees around you and there are plants and you see the open sky and the clouds, just being around that purview, just being around that environment already uplifts you and makes you feel better physically and mentally. If you're an owner of a dog or a cat, anytime you stroke your cat or your dog, it releases chemicals within your brain that make you feel relaxed, that lower any blood pressure and improve your immune system, overall impacting your health and your psychological health in the best way possible. That is why even people who are depressed are advised to have a pet so that it can alleviate the negative energy that they contain within themselves. And the reason why nature has this um, propensity to improve the human condition is because nature has the frequency of God, the frequency of the universe, the primordial energy of the universe is radiating out of these organisms and out of nature but because we have bridged a gap between humanity and nature we feel disconnected from this primordial energy too and because we feel disconnected 
we have failed to understand that we too can communicate with the entirety of nature. But before we engage as to how to communicate with nature, I first like to state that the communication that nature partakes in does not follow the human style of communication. It does not follow the communication styles of human beings. So we human beings communicate linguistically. We utilize language to communicate ideas from my uh, mind to your mind. We communicate these ideas utilizing language. And language is a linear process. Language has a beginning, it has a middle, and it has an end. Every idea you want to express follows a linear pattern so that it creates a form of a story. And thus we interpret it in that way. But unfortunately, nature does not communicate in the way that we communicate. The communication that nature partakes in is not linguistic and it is not linear. The way nature communicates is through raw and unbreached sensations. And these sensations occur not through language, not through spoken words and not through uh, the linear approach, but it's an instantaneous feeling or sensation, a certain knowing that transcends our style of communication. So now you're asking yourself, okay, how on earth do I now communicate in this fashion? How on earth do I now divert myself from the normal, the normal way of communication into this now uh, new way of communication that I have never, ever actually participated in. Well, I can assure you that there's nothing to fear. And I can assure you that this style of communication is actually our natural way of communicating too. But with the birth of language came this new evolution of communication in which we utilize language to communicate ideas. Okay. But nature does not communicate that way. So now a way that we can now tap in to nature, a way that we can tap into this line of communication that is always occurring. Nature is always communicating with us. That's a thing that we need to understand. Nature is in continuous communication with us. And it's in the little things. It's in the drop of a leaf. It's in the birds flying in the sky. It's in the clouds passing. It's in the wind passing through your skin. These are all ways in which nature is finding ways to communicate with you. But in order for you to receive this message, you must be receptive. And the only way to be receptive as a human being, the only way to be receptive as a human being is to be empty. For if you're not empty, you're contained with ideas, conceptions, perceptions, beliefs. All these filter how you see the world and how you see life, and how you see the environment, and how this communication is now affected. But, but, if you are empty, you make yourself a vessel, you make yourself a conduit in which this message then can simmer into your being. And then you can notice it and acknowledge it because you are not uh, filled with ideas, but you are empty. And thus, in that emptiness, nature can then uh, intervene and then communicate with you. And this is done by emptying your mind, neglecting this process of continuously and desiring 
the process of thinking. Just let it go. Surrender. Be empty. And in that emptiness, the whole universe is at access. I invite you, when you walk on the park or in the road, pay attention to your environment. Pay attention to the trees. Pay attention to the vastness of the sky. Pay attention to the beauty of the clouds. Pay attention to how the wind feels as it gushes through your skin, as it opens up your pores and you feel the texture of the wind. Pay attention to those little things. And when you pay attention to those little things, you open yourself up for nature to express itself. You open yourself up so that nature can communicate with you. And when you receive that message, it will fluctuate and move across your body as a sensation. And it will be instantaneous. The message will be instantaneous. It won't be lingual. It won't be linear. But it's an instant knowing. But the only way that you can achieve this is by being empty. Open yourself up to the vastness of nature. Be receptive. Be present. And when you can do this, then you open the lines of communication that for thousands of years has been suppressed because we have imagined ourselves as being different from nature. So in order to live at our highest potential as human beings, we must reconnect with this primordial energy. Because once we are empty, then we get ourselves to the platform, to the space in which all things share an experience. When I'm with my dog, how I communicate with her, I am very good actually with uh, communicating with my dog. I can actually instruct her to sit down without even saying a word. And that's because I get myself to the empty state. And in that empty state, I impose, maybe impose is the wrong word to use, but I insert an image in my mind and I imagine as if I'm transferring that image into her mind. And this image is, let's just say, her sitting down. And I transfer that image in that empty state to her. Automatically, she gets it and she knows that she needs to sit down. Because I get myself to the space of emptiness. And in the space of emptiness, all things within existence share that space. In that space is where communication is continuously occurring between you and nature. And nature's intelligence transcends your normal day-to-day -day intelligence. Because Nature's intelligence is not linear, and because it is not linear, it does not, uh, it, it is not restricted by time. Your mind currently, right now, is a slave to time, but nature is not a slave to time. And the reason why nature is not a slave to time is because nature is absent of concepts and ideas. So, as I said before. Whenever you're around nature, don't look around and say, this is the sky, this is the cloud, this is the tree. Let that go. Let it all go. Let everything go. Let go of all your ideas. Let go of all your beliefs. Let go of all your perspectives. And look at nature from the eyes of purity. Look at nature from the eyes of purity. And when you see nature in this way, you see it as it is. And you see the miraculous manifestation that is unfolding before your eyes. But we don't see that because our minds and our eyes are continuously, continuously disturbed 
by concepts and thoughts. But if we get ourselves to that emptiness, then we get ourselves back into the connection in which we share with nature. And once we communicate with nature, then we can achieve our highest ideals. Because now we're connected to something that is way more vast than your day-to-day -day consciousness. A consciousness that encapsulates this earth and the universe around. So once you get yourself to that state of being empty, the universe is at your axis and nature communicates. So thank you very much guys for listening to this. Please like if you like this video. Please share if you found this content valuable. Please comment if you'd like to uh, ask a question or say something. And to end it off as I always end it off. For those who seek, seek no more. For in the present we find it all.